What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trick Tens. This is part three to finish up this 2022 well-built 1652. Setting this thing up for tournament fishing in the local Suffolk Lakes. This thing is gonna be sick. I'm getting ready to install the Panoptic system. I'm gonna give you a full walkthrough tutorial on how to do that. I'm also gonna be installing my Bass Dual Graph Bridge, which is really cool. It's gonna house the 126 and the 106. They're gonna sit up here perfectly. You're gonna get to see how this thing looks and works, and it's gonna be really sick. I'm also gonna put this Hummingbird 12 inch unit on this swing arm. I'm gonna mount that in the rear of the boat. And I did something on this boat that I do to a lot of my builds. I didn't wanna put the transducer through the back of the transom for this Hummingbird unit. So I welded a one by three piece of rectangular tube on the back. That's basically just gonna house the transducer. Um, the boat is painted, so it added a little bit of difficulty to it. But what I did was I just welded a couple spots on it and I cooled it immediately. And then I taped it off, cleaned it up and sprayed it black. I think it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna get right into it because I wanna get this thing wrapped up. Let's get back to work. All right, so I've got all my wires run up into this front compartment here. And now I'm going to install the black box for this Garmin Panoptic system. I'm gonna mount this right up underneath here next to this battery and fish all the wires for the transducer and everything back up to the front, attach them to our Garmin trolling motor. The black power box is mounted what we're going to do now is install this transducer. I'm going to install it on the shaft right here. These parts right here. It's pretty simple. I'm going to install that and I'll show you how I uh, leave slack in the wire. So the live scope transducer is mounted. It's very simple, the instructions are very thorough. Just be careful when you tighten up these bolts. This is a plastic bracket, and this thing could potentially crack if you over tighten them. It's on there pretty sturdy. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to run this cable up here, tape it in a couple of spots, and they tell you to split it and leave about five inches of gap. And before I attach it permanently, I'll make sure the trolling motor head can spin completely either direction without it binding up. Now comes the part that just blows my mind. This transducer cable, it has a large head on it. Garmin, this is your product. This is your product. How can you make this sweet ass sleeve on the side that houses your battery wire and your transducer wire for the built-in transducer on this unit not big enough to put this head through here? It just, it, you had one job. I mean, it's sweet. You got it on both sides. You could have very easily just made this thing a little bit taller and it would have been able to hold that transducer for the pan optics. I'm gonna hop in the boat and show you exactly what I'm talking about and how I've wired this up. All right, so this is the head I'm talking about. I even tried to take a little twist end off of it to see if it would fit through that sleeve on the trolling motor bracket. It does not fit. I'm hoping that's something that they address and come up with a better solution to because it seems like it's a no brainer to me. I am not cutting this wire and splicing it back together just to fit it through that sleeve. So we're going to make it look the best we can and I'm sure it will be fine. Well the other connections we have left inside of here, this one on the end, this is just a ground wire. This red one, all the Garmin power cables are red, very simple. I'm actually going to hook this one up to a switch because I've heard stories of this black box draining your battery power even when not in use. Next to that is the network connector, very simple. The cable for that one is right here. It comes in the box with the pan optics. It's actually two separate cables. 
There's only one way to connect them. You cannot mess this up. It's very easy. This one is like an ethernet connection. This is gonna go into the back of your Garmin unit. And then this one is the connection that's gonna run into the black box. I'm gonna run that cable from this black box back over here, up through this grommet, and up through the recessed foot pedal tray hole. And then it's gonna go into the back of the Garmin unit that's gonna be sitting on the dual graph bridge. So let's get back to work. All right, so the black box has all the cable connections into it. Everything is done, ready to roll. Only thing I have to do is hook up this uh, little ground wire right here. I'm gonna do that in just a second. Those cables are all routed up through the hole in the front deck for the recessed foot pedal tray. So now I'm gonna open up this uh, brand new Garmin Ultra 106 SV and the 126 SV. This one will be on the top of the dual grab bridge and this one will be sitting on the bottom. I'm gonna get the power cables out of here Go ahead and wire those up. Then I'm gonna install them onto the graph bridge itself and try to get this thing set in the boat and mounted. Let's get back to work. That is a big ass graph. It's crazy how much difference there really is between the 106 and the 126. I mean, this thing is, it's, it's dramatic. It doesn't seem like it'd be much difference between a 10 and a 12 inch graph, but there really is a humongous difference in my opinion. All right guys, so I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty hyped about this. This is my new Bass Dual Graph Braze Trick Tens. This thing's sick. I'm about to hook up both of this 126 and this 106 SV unit onto it. why I built the dual graph bridge for stuff just like this right here. Perfect setup, both graphs are in line, everything bolts up, it's easy. The angle and degree of this, I put a lot of time and thought into this. The way I figured this out, the, the hole pattern, I mean, I didn't have to drill any holes, everything was ready to go. Both these Garmin units mounted up. The same hole pattern will fit the Lowrance, the Hummingbirds. You can put up the two 12 inch graphs on here, Possibly something bigger, maybe a 15 and a 12. I don't know. I haven't really had 15 inch graph money in a while. So it's an old two 12 inch graphs, no problem. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up a little bit of wiring on the top and get this thing installed. This thing is sick. I'm hyped. All right guys, so I set the recessed foot pedal tray in there, troll motors hooked up, graph bridge is installed, and man, this thing looks sick. I'm gonna go ahead and power on these units, make sure everything's working as it should. Damn. 
Damn, that thing is pretty. It's got a custom recessed foot pedal tray. It's built just for the Garmin foot pedal. Custom dual graph bridge. I mean, look how they sit. Could you ask for anything better than that? I mean, it's perfect. They're right in line. All right, so let's turn the switch on for the black box. Let's go make sure our panoptic system is working. All right, it just popped up. Panoptics. The panoptics is live. There we go. Let's look at some charts. Perfect. All the electrical is working as it should. Both graphs are hooked up. The Trick 10's graph bridge is a success. Looks beautiful. Now I'm gonna tighten up all these wires. I'm gonna shove all this foam back inside of this foot pedal tray. As much foam as I can get up underneath this deck. The last thing I'll do is I'll, I'll screw down this foot pedal tray. Alright guys, so we got our <clears throat> live scope transducer, they tell you to tape it, so I taped it in two spots. This is the spot where they tell you to cut it where it's going to be rotating. It's very gently going to run a razor knife through here. Say so it's separated about five inches, so it should be about good right there. <clears throat> then what I'm going to do, I'm going to spin this troll motor. And it's very responsive. I'm barely touching the thing. All right, so that is gonna be the tightest possible point this thing can get to. Gotta leave enough slack in here so this thing can move. I mean, obviously you see it's got a lot of slack right here, but it has to have that to be able to spin around. So the boat is completed. This is the puck that I welded back here to attach the transducer or for the helix graph on. I ran it up the side and comes through this side panel. Back out underneath of it. It's on a swing arm. Thing fits perfect. It's a really nice graph too. Obviously, Got our switch panel over here, fuse panel next to that, live well. The only thing I don't have in here is his Dakota lithium batteries. I have my own batteries staged in here just so I can make sure everything works. Garmin trolling motor, custom foot pedal tray, custom Trick Tens dual graph bridge, 126 on top. 106 on the bottom. I mean, they just sit up there perfectly. The thing is sick. All the wires are ran down. The grommet in the face of the foot pedal. The foot pedal is attached. Everything is sturdy. Got our panoptics transducer. They tell you to tape it to the shaft, so it's taped. We got plenty of slack in our loop right there. It feeds back under. So 
sweet boat. I can't wait till he gets this thing out on the water. Start showing it off. Alright guys, I hate to do it, but I'm going to have to call this one. This boat build turned out really cool. It's got a lot of state-of-the-art electronics in it. Um, it's not every day that someone brings you a brand new boat and a ton of brand new electronics to install. So it was really cool putting all this stuff in and setting it all up. Um, I got a chance to build a custom uh, Garmin Force foot pedal tray, which was the first one of those I built. I've actually got another one I got to build now. And I got a chance to install my Trick 10's graph bridge in a boat, which was sick because I haven't actually installed this one that I have. This is the final product. I ran through a bunch of prototypes to get here. I put a lot of thought into this. This seems to be what everybody in the local area is going to. They all got to run the pan optics now and they're all trying to have about a 12 inch screen with a nine or 10 inch screen underneath of it or even two 12 inch screens, but they will fit on the thing perfectly and it just gets everything nice and streamlined. Plus they look really sick. If you're interested in purchasing one of those, I've got about 15 left that are powder coated black and maybe about 10 that our raw aluminum can be powder coated any color you want to match your boot. They're 350 bucks and you can leave a comment down below. I'll reach out to you or you can shoot me an email on my website at trick10sjohnboats.com and I'll hook you up. They're literally in the box. I could ship them to you tomorrow. But let's get back to this boat real quick. The thing turned out really cool. It's, it's rigged completely. It's ready to fish a tournament. You could go fish a tournament right now if you wanted to. It took me all in all about 20 hours but everything looks sick. It looks really good. All of the wires are hidden underneath the deck. Everything is just professionally done. So I got a couple other projects I'm gonna get started on here and just very shortly, but I really appreciate you guys who subscribe to the channel, you know, like, comments, questions, all that. I'll reach out, I'll reach back out to you and um, I'll see you on the next one. But it's time for me to get back to work.